You know, you can do a lot of things with a bandsaw, but one of the reasons that I'd like one of those machines is that you can do resawing. Now, if you're not familiar with what resawing is, it's simply sawing down the thickness of a piece of wood. Think of it as cutting a piece of wood in two the skinny way. So why would you do that? Well, there's a lot of reasons you might want to, but let's just say, for example, that you had a thick piece of wood like this mahogany and you wanted to use it in a project, but it's too thick for you. You'd rather have three quarter inch lumber. Well, you could put it through a planer, but then half of it would end up as sawdust. Or you could resaw it, come up with two useful pieces of wood and a lot less waste. One thing I really like to do with resawing is to create a book match panel. What's that? Well, here's an example. The top of this box is book match. Now, we call it book matching because you open the two pieces of wood up much like you would a book. Then, when you join them together, you get this beautiful complementary grain pattern. It's almost identical on either side. Book match panels can enhance a box lid, a cabinet door, or the sides of a frame and panel cabinet. So, how do you resaw? I'm glad you asked that. You know, resawing is pretty easy on a bandsaw, but there are a few rules you can follow that will make your life even easier. For example, your stock should be prepared with two parallel faces and an edge that's 90 degrees to both of them so that you can balance on that edge as you're feeding it into the bandsaw. Now with resawing, wider is always better with your bandsaw blade. Now with our 15 inch bandsaw, we can go with a one inch wide blade. But most 14 inch bandsaws will have, allow you to take up to a three quarters of an inch wide bandsaw blade and you can resaw just fine with that. It's also useful to have fewer teeth per inch on a resaw blade. Here we have three teeth per inch, which is about perfect. It cuts aggressively and clears sawdust effectively. It does leave a rougher cut, but you'll need to surface the resawn face anyway, so make your life easier with fewer teeth. Now almost any bandsaw will resaw to one degree or another. There are some limiting factors, however. We've already talked about blade width. Another one is the distance from the tabletop to the bottom of the blade guard. In this case, this saw goes up to 14 inches, which is pretty impressive. The final one I think we should talk about is the motor size. Now, on this big saw, we have a three horsepower motor. If you're using a more typical 14 inch saw, you'll have a one and a half or a one and three quarter horsepower motor. They'll work just fine. You just need to go a little slower. I spun the saw around to show you the last detail I wanted to talk about. It's the fence. You'll notice that there's a cylinder added to this fence here. Sometimes when you're cutting down the length of a board, the blade wants to wander, whether it's from grain pressure or the blade is not as sharp as it ought to be. This fence allows you to adjust the angle of your board so that you can keep that blade dead center as you're making the entire cut. Now, this fence is made out of metal, but I've actually made point fences of my own out of wood. But enough talking, let's get to rocking. Let me show you how to do a resaw cut. The point fence is adjusted so it positions the stock as you engage the cut. Here, the fence is set for a 3 8 inch thick cut. A slow, steady feed rate works best. And keep your fingers away from the blade. So that's really all there is to it. Resawing is a great way to enhance your woodworking and save a little money as well.